In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a WordPress sitemap using the Google XML sitemap plugin. It's free, and as far as I know, it's going to remain free forever. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. This is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish new WordPress tutorials for you. And with that out of the way, let's hop into creating these XML sitemaps for your WordPress site over in the screen capture. I'll see you there. The first thing we need to do is install the XML sitemaps plugin to be able to generate these sitemaps. So I'm going to head over to plugins and then click on add new. In the search bar, I'm going to type in XML sitemap. The one that we want is this one called Google XML sitemaps down here. Click on install now to install it. Before you install it, make sure that you back up your site files and your database just in case something goes sideways. I'm going to click install now and then activate. Now the sitemap's installed. We have a new menu item that appears under settings and then XML sitemap. Click on there to open the settings page for this plugin. Now on the settings page there are a lot of settings options. I'm going to show you the most important ones to make sure your sitemap runs well and there's some others that you can do for more advanced stuff if you want to but it's really not necessary. So the first thing, we go to the basic options. By default, notify Google is checked, notify Bing is checked, and add sitemap URL to virtual robots text file is also checked. We wanna keep all those three checked. If your sitemap is having troubles being generated, that's when we wanna increase the memory limit here in the advanced options, as well as the execution time. That's just if you're having problems or if your website's having problems generating the sitemap, that's the only time you'd use those things. And this is checked by default, we'll leave that there. Leave this checked. I don't have to worry about this area right now, or ever really. Uh, for the priority, the most active posts, you'd wanna have the highest priority, which means Google or any search engine would index that post first, and when they come back to review your site to look for changes, they would go to the highest priority post first. Now, one way to calculate the priority is through comment count. So if you have posts that constantly get comments, those would be higher priority because those are pages that are constantly being updated, constantly having new content added to them, which a comment is new content. And so search engines like that kind of thing. So you can prioritize posts that get lots of comments using this calculation, which is what I recommend you do. Other options, no priority, so first come, first serve, whatever's first on the list on your sitemap is the first one that's indexed. Comment average uses the average comment count for the priority. I usually go with the absolute comment count, the one in the middle here. For which pages to index, I always include the home page, posts, and static pages. I rarely include anything else on this list because all the others are usually ways to organize these first three in a different way. So categories are always lists of pages in that category, which are made up of posts. Archives, same thing. Author pages often have a list of the author's posts. Tag pages, same thing. You might have these custom taxonomies, or maybe not. Some of these are added because of plugins installed on this demo site. Same for the custom post types, you may have none here. But either way, these top three, you should always select. I never select any of the others, but it's up to you if you want to try that. You can always deselect them in the future, update your sitemap, and then those won't be present anymore. But those top three, for sure. Excluding items. I usually exclude uncategorized. I make sure I have no posts on the site that are uncategorized, which is bad practice anyway. You might want to double check that there are no posts that are uncategorized. And then I always exclude that. You can exclude other things from the sitemap if you want to, if you need to. Change frequency, this is how often do these parts of your site change? How often does your homepage change? Do you have posts that are reposted to your website every single day? Then choose daily. If not, choose a different option. That makes the most sense. You don't want to have all these set to daily and you're only publishing one post a month. That's gonna be a waste of the search engine's time and they're gonna figure out, they're gonna keep coming back to your site, nothing's new and they're gonna stop believing you that the changes are daily and they're gonna adjust their search frequency on their own. So it's best to just be honest, pick the relevant update frequency for each of these for your site. Home page priority should always be number one because that page is the most important on your site. Other priorities you can set as needed. These, the categories, archives, tags, authors, those are irrelevant if you don't have them checked up above here. 
you don't have these boxes checked, then these priorities down here don't matter. They don't affect anything. And that's the end of the settings for this plugin. Now, if we click on update options right here, we now have an updated sitemap, which you can view in this link that it posts in the top of this plugin settings page. So if we open that in another page, another tab, we see the XML sitemap as created by that plugin. There's not too much going on on this site because I just don't have a lot on the demo site, but there you have the sitemap. And what you can do is take this URL and include that in the Google Search Console and the Bing Webmaster Tools. I've got a couple other videos on the channel to show you how to do that. I've linked to them below in the description and you can also find them in my channel, like I said, but you definitely wanna send or include this URL into those services because that helps them find your content faster. And it also provides you a lot of other benefits that are tangential to just having sitemaps in there. But you definitely wanna have Google Search Console and Bing Webmaster Tools online and running for your site and collecting data. That's all there is to creating these sitemaps. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below the video. If you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more WordPress tutorials for you. And next up is clicking one of these videos on the right hand side so you can learn even more about WordPress and get even better at it. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.